So recently I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys asking about the guitar tones and how I record my guitar sounds for the tracks in these videos. So today I thought I would come on and show you one of my favorite ways to record guitars. And I'm gonna show you how to get a massive guitar sound using a tiny low wattage one by 10 combo amp. This is the amp we're gonna be using today. This is a Supro Comet. It's small, it's lightweight, but this thing packs a punch. You can switch it between six and 14 watts. It's got a great onboard tube driven tremolo as well as a really nice spring reverb. Other than that, it's a pretty simple amp, just a volume and a tone control. I've had my hands on this amp for about a month and you've actually heard it on a lot of my most recent videos. So if you're interested in checking out the amp, there's gonna be a link in the description box down below. For all my videos, I record the amps in this little homemade ISO box here that my wife Tilly and I built a few years ago. And it's actually pretty solid. It's just half inch MDF with a layer of foam insulation and then a layer of Orlex. And then for the floor, I actually cut up a couple of yoga mats and glued them all down. And when this lid is closed, it cuts the volume down drastically. When I'm playing my bigger amps in here, you can't even really hear it over the studio monitors that I use. All right, next we're here at the patch bay. I'm gonna patch the 57 from the ISO box into one of my preamps and from the preamp into my computer. So I'll come out of the ISO box into my preamp EQ, out of that into channel three of my interface. Okay, so now I'm all patched in. The preamp and EQ I'm using is this right here. It's from Undertone Audio. It's called the MP EQ One. And it's a really cool unit. It's a preamp and an EQ all in one rack space unit, all analog, class A, it sounds amazing. Now, you don't need an outboard mic preamp and EQ to do this. You can absolutely do this with a software EQ that you have in your DAW software. You know, I use the Waves stuff a lot, but one of the things I really like about Logic 10 is the stock plugins. Their EQs, their compressors are all pretty solid for a stock DAW software plugin. So that's it. It's a really simple setup, one mic, one amp. I'm gonna grab a guitar here and try and come up with a riff or idea that I can turn into a song. <laughs> So that wasn't terrible. So I think that's a decent place to start. Basically, I will lay down one track that's kind of just running through the form so I kind of know where my roadmap is. And then I start to add layers and build stuff on top. Right now it's just the one guitar part and it sounds good. The amp by itself sounds great, but it definitely needs a lot more weight and some more power behind it. So we're gonna double track that part. When you're double tracking guitar parts, you don't want the two parts to sound exactly the same. Otherwise you get what I've heard referred to as as big mono. It's just the same sound panned hard left and right. It doesn't give you the same effect that double tracking slightly different sounds does. So next I'm gonna grab a different guitar. I'm gonna leave the amp settings where they are. I like that sound and I like that feel. And then I'm gonna play the exact same part again. Once it's recorded, I'm then gonna take the two tracks and pan them not hard left and right, but left and right. And you'll hear the immediate difference when you just double the guitar part. So did you notice what an immediate difference that made? I didn't do anything else to the track other than play the same part on a different guitar. See, this is the cool thing about double tracking guitar parts is it adds so much weight and power and energy. And again, remember, I'm using a tiny little amp, it's 110. I'm running six watts right now. It's not even at its full power setting. I've just got it dimed at six watts with one mic and that amp sounds huge, especially when we get it into the context of a full mix with drums and bass and maybe other guitar parts and keys. It'll sound like I was playing through a wall of marshals. So next I'm gonna throw in a basic drum pattern under this and then we'll add bass and see where the track takes us.
Okay, so admittedly, I'm not the best drum programmer in the world, but I think what I have here is gonna do great for illustrating the point I'm trying to make. So, the next thing I'm gonna do is lay down some bass to fill out the bottom end that's missing from the guitar parts, and then I may add another rhythm guitar part and just have a few bars of a really heavy sounding rock track. Okay, so you can really tell how the bass and the other doubled rhythm parts I just added are really helping to fill out and add to the overall sound. Now it's worth noting too that the rhythm guitars that I just threw in are buried pretty low in the mix. I don't necessarily want them to stand out as much as I want them to act as a sort of foundation to help fill out some mid-range since I don't have any other mid-rangey kind of instruments or no vocals or anything else going on in the track. It's basically just guitar, bass, and drums. So doubling those rhythm parts, those power chords with two different guitars and hard panning them left and right in this case is giving me a nice sort of smooth foundation that everything else can sit on. So I think I'm pretty happy with this track as it is. I wanna add one more part though. I wanna add a high octave part that is outlining the riff just to kind of give it a little extra power. Now arrangement wise, I wouldn't necessarily do this every time. Maybe if you were writing this into a full song, you would only save this for the last chorus or for the instrumental section. My point being I wouldn't use it for every single riff or else it'll get repetitive and it'll lose its impact. I'm also gonna change the tone up pretty drastically on this part by using a fuzz pedal. That'll help separate it from the rest of the tones because we are using the same amp for this whole setup. I wanna add a little extra on top of it just to make it stand out a little bit more. So there you go, double tracking guitar parts. I'd love to hear what you're working on. You can DM me on Instagram at Rhett Scholl or shoot me an email through my website. The link is in the description box down below. Send me some stuff that you've been working on. It may be featured in an upcoming video. If you're interested in the gear I used in today's video, it will all be linked in the description box down below. You can also find a link to my Patreon page there as well. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do that for just $2 a month. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Rhett Scholl, and remember, there is no plan B.